In this video, we're going to implement the merge sort algorithm in C. So the merge sort algorithm can be used to sort an array of elements, among other things. And I have to say that the merge sort algorithm is pretty much my favorite sorting algorithm. There's just something about the way it works that I find kind of cool. So we'll go over how the algorithm works first, and then we'll go over how to implement it in C. So let's go over an example run of the algorithm. Here we have an unsorted array. The first step in the algorithm is to continually subdivide this unsorted array into smaller and smaller portions until we're left with individual elements in the array. Then at this point, we begin to merge these now sorted portions of the array into larger and larger portions of the array until we're left with the sorted original array. So this algorithm uses what's called a divide and conquer approach, where initially we're dividing this big problem up of sorting this array into smaller and smaller subproblems. So each time here, we're going to split this array that we're given at the middle into two arrays. We continue to do this until we're left with these individual elements in the array. Now at this point, we could consider these elements to each be a sorted array of one element because an array of one element is just sorted by default. Then at this point, we begin to merge them and we merge sorted arrays. Now merging sorted arrays is a bit of an easier process than merging unsorted arrays. And we'll go over the algorithm to do that. But we're gonna continually merge these sorted arrays until we're left with the original array sorted. Notably, the divide and conquer approach of merge sort makes it highly parallelizable. So for example, we could use it on a computer cluster handling a very, very large data set. So let's implement the algorithm now. The first thing we'll need is a test array. So I'll say int array is equal to, and I'll put the numbers from zero to nine in here in a bit of a random order that's gonna be unsorted. Two, five, and six. All right, so that should be that. And then we'll create a variable for the length of the array and we'll set it equal to 10. Now we're gonna need several functions to help us carry out this algorithm. So here I'll say void merge sort int a and int length. So this is the function we're gonna call to actually carry out the algorithm. And it's gonna accept the array as an argument as well as the length of the array. Then we'll say void merge sort recursion int a, int l, and int r. So this function is gonna carry out the recursive step of the algorithm where we continually divide the unsorted array into smaller and smaller portions. And it's gonna accept the array as an argument as well as arguments that define the portion of the array that we're looking at. Then we'll say void merge sorted arrays. And this is going to actually merge the two sorted portions of the array. So it'll accept the array as an argument, as well as some indexes in the array that define the portions of the array that we're looking at. So the first thing we'll do is call merge sort with our array and the length of the array. Now when merge sort is done, the array should be sorted. And at this point, we wanna print out the array to make sure it's actually been sorted. So we'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than length, i plus plus, and we'll print out each element in the array separated by a space. So here we'll say array i, and then when we're all done, we'll print out a new line character. So this is just gonna print out each element in the array by incrementing the counter variable i from zero up until the length of the array and printing out the array's value at the index i each time. So first we'll define the merge sort function and we're basically creating this merge sort function to make using the algorithm simpler for the programmer because all the programmer really needs to provide is the array and the length of the array and that's all they really should have to. And then from there, this function we'll call the recursive function to actually carry out the algorithm with the portion of the array that we're concerned about, which in this case is going to be the entire portion of the array initially. So we'll say merge sort recursion, and we'll pass in the array, and then we'll say zero and length minus one. And then we'll define the merge sort recursion function. So we'll copy this, paste it down here, and in this function here, this here, the second argument, is defining the left index of the portion of the array 
that we're concerned with. This here is defining the rightmost index in the array that we're concerned about. So that's why we initially provide zero and length minus one, because those are initially the indexes defining the bounds of the portion of the array that we're looking at, which is initially the entire array. So the first thing we'll do is say int m is equal to l plus r minus l divided by two. And this is gonna define the middle of this portion of the array that we're currently looking at by basically adding the left index to the right index minus the left index divided by two. Then we'll call merge sort recursion with these smaller portions of the array from the left index to the middle and from the middle to the right index. So we'll say merge sort recursion, A, L, and M, and then merge sort recursion, and we'll say A, M plus one, and R. So here we're calling merge sort recursion with indexes defining the left portion. And then here we call it with indexes defining the right portion. Now after these two things, we'll have the sorted portions of the array in these indexes. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is now merge those. So we'll say merge sorted arrays, and we'll pass in A, L, M, and R, the indexes that this function is gonna to need to actually merge those two sorted portions of the array. So now eventually we want this recursion to stop. And we're gonna stop the recursion when L is greater than or equal to R. So long as L is less than R, we're gonna continue the recursion because we're gonna continually divide our unsorted array into smaller and smaller portions. So this defines the merge sort recursion function. The next thing we need to do is define this merge sorted arrays function. So we'll go up here, we'll grab this and we'll paste it down here. And now we'll define this function. So the first thing we're gonna need is the length of each portion of the array that we're looking at. So we'll say int left length is equal to m minus l plus one, because l is the index defining the start of the left portion of the array. m is the index defining the middle, and r is the index defining the last index of the right portion of the array. So if we say m minus l plus one, that's gonna give us the length of that left portion of the array. Then we'll say int right length is equal to r minus m. So take that right index, subtract it by the middle index, that's gonna give us the length of the right portion of the array. Now to help us carry out merge sort, we're gonna create two temporary subarrays and we'll copy the portions of a for the left and right portions into these subarrays. So we'll say int temp left, left length, and int temp right, and we'll say right length. Then we'll create some counter variables to help us work with these arrays. So we'll say int i, j, and k. And the first thing we'll do is copy the portions of array that we want to work with into these temporary arrays, temp left and temp right. So we'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than the left length, i plus plus, and we'll copy into temp left at index i the value in the array at the left index plus i. And then we'll do the same thing for the temporary right portion array. So we'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than right length, i plus plus, and we'll copy into temp right at index i, the value in the array at the middle index plus one plus i. So what we're doing here with these operations l plus i and m plus one plus i is we're making sure that we're copying the portion of the array that we want to concern ourselves with into these temporary arrays, right? Because the left portion of the array starts at index L and goes from there. 
up until left length number of elements. And so when we copy L plus I, when I goes from zero up until left length, we're copying that portion of the array into the temp left temporary array. And same thing with temp right, because that right portion of the array starts at the M plus one index. So we start copying from there, and then we add I to it each time to copy the subsequent elements from that position onwards. So next we're gonna do the trickiest part, which is actually merging these two sorted subarrays. So we'll make a for loop to help us with this. We'll say for I is equal to zero, J is equal to zero, K is equal to L. Then we'll say do this so long as K is less than or equal to R and then K plus plus. So this part here is kind of tricky because we really have three counter variables helping us to index these three arrays here. So K is gonna be used to index the actual array that we're sorting, A. So K is our index into that array. And if you look here, we're starting K off at L and we're gonna go up until index R, incrementing K by one each time this for loop body executes. So K is really keeping track of our place in array A. And we're gonna go from that left index all the way up until the rightmost index in our array. And what we're gonna do is each time in this for loop body, we're gonna be finding the next element from either temp left or temp right to copy into the array at index K. So it's just sort of going along one element at a time in the portion of the array A that we're looking at and we're gonna be filling it in with a value from temp left or temp right. Now I and J are gonna be our indexes into these arrays. So I is gonna keep track of what index are we into in this temporary left array. J is gonna keep track of what index are we into for this temporary right array. And we'll be incrementing those only if we use the next element from temp left or temp right to fill in our array. So here's the, gonna be the tricky if statement. We're gonna say here if i is less than left length and j is greater than or equal to right length or temp left at i is less than or equal to temp right at j. So if this is true, we're gonna copy into our array at index k, the value from the temp left array at index i, and we're gonna increment i. Otherwise, we're gonna copy into our array at index k, the value from the temp right array at index j, and we're gonna increment j by one here. And this will actually do it. This will perform the merge. So what's going on here? So this case here is covering when we actually want to copy from the temp left array into our array. Because if you think about what it looks like at this point, we really have two sorted arrays in temp left and temp right. So you can imagine temp left looks like this. We've got maybe four, nine, and 12. And in temp right, we've got maybe five, eight, and 14. And what we're trying to do is pick off the next element from either one of these arrays to copy into the array that we're sorting, A. So what we're looking for is which array has the next smallest element. And that's what this check is right here. We're using I and J to keep track of where we are in temp left and temp right. So initially I is here and initially J is here. And in the case of our array A, we're using K to keep track of where we are in that array. So we could say we've got K here initially. Now, when we do a check for temp left being less than or equal to temp right, if temp left is less than or equal to temp right, that means it's the next smallest element or it's a tie. Either way though, in this case here, we'd be comparing four and five, right? 
and four is less than five. So we'd copy four into our array A. And that's what we do here. We say A at K is equal to temp left at I. And then I gets incremented. So we're now looking at the next element in the temp left array. And K would get incremented every time in our for loop. So K is kind of been shifted over as well. Now the next time through this if statement, we're gonna check is temp left less than or equal to temp right. In this case, temp left is nine and temp right is five. So at this point, this is not true. So because this is not true, what's gonna happen is the else case is gonna execute. And we're gonna copy from temp right at index J into A at index K. And then J is gonna be incremented. So J gets incremented and we copy five into A and K gets incremented. And this just goes on like this. Now this is the basis of how this works, but there is a little bit more to it because we have more than just this condition. You'll notice there's these two conditions as well. I is less than left length and J is greater than or equal to the right length or this is true. So there's a little bit more going on here than I initially talked about. So what these cases are handling is the case that we reach the end of one of the arrays. Because if I is not less than the left length, what that means is that we've reached the end of the temp left array. Once we've reached the end of the temp left array, we're not gonna be copying anything from temp left anymore. We're just gonna be copying things from temp right. And then we have one more condition here. And this should actually be part of a compound expression here. So if j is greater than or equal to the right length, what that means is that we've reached the end of the temp right array. And if that's the case, it doesn't really matter if temp left at index i is less than or equal to temp right at index j because we're just kind of done with that right array at that point. And we know that we want to copy from the temp left array at index i into our array at index k. So this really should be it now. We'll save this and we'll try to run it. And hopefully we get a sorted array. So we'll save it, run it, and you can see that we have now a sorted array of numbers from zero to nine. This is how we can implement the merge sort algorithm in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.